Hello Pastor Adam, we've just had Sabbath worship here at Campari, mm -hmm. the TD Campari, and it's been a wonderful and inspirational time and you have been the pastor here to the children for the week. How have you felt about the experience? Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, <laughs> surreal actually. I didn't know what to expect. It's a difficult age group, 10 to 16. Um, but I feel God has really blessed and the connection between um, how do you say the team and the, the audience or the youth has been awesome it, it's been nice you know just to walk amongst the camp and everyone's like hey Adam hey Adam and it, it's a good sign you know that you're connecting um, so it, it's a prayer answer it's a real prayer answer yeah and how did you feel about what you shared last night the baptism and the response to the appeal you made <laughs> yeah that is, you know it's um, I think it's a real serious thing you know when people um, have the opportunity to make a decision for Jesus. Myself, <laughs> I don't want to say I was coerced, but if I was to redo my life, I don't think I would have been baptized at the age I was. Um, I think often, uh, especially youth, um, the groups, it's a, I, want to say, I don't want to say group press, you know, but you see your friends doing it, and maybe you're not there for the right motivation. So I really wanted to make it clear that, you know, this, this choice for baptism is a real choice for you're choosing Jesus and it's okay if you're not ready to do that now you know you can get to know him more you can get to you can learn about him more before you take that decision and I hope that message came across it seemed that people appreciated that at least and I hope that maybe the burden of having to make that decision now wasn't so much there but that those who did make the decision um, really meant it yeah so it was beautiful to see it was really beautiful to see What's your journey to faith been like? Um, I grew up in England, Wolverhampton. Loved it. Amazing atmosphere. Grew up in a, a GBK. <laughs> um, compared to the rest of Europe, maybe a, quite a strict upbringing. Um, so I've, I would say I've had a, a, maybe a stronger relation to the laws of the church than the, uh, the heart of the church, maybe, or the heart of the message. And at the age of 21, I moved to Norway. Completely different culture, challenged a lot. You know, what is, what, what is really the heart of this message? And um, just that culture change has been able, I don't know, I, I don't wanna say that I have the best of both, maybe I have the worst of both. <laughs> but I think that journey has allowed me to see um, that everyone, everyone needs Jesus in a sense, and everyone needs to know that they're accepted in him everyone needs to know that they're forgiven in him um, and the result of that at least in my life I see it whenever I focus on the rules I go away from Jesus whenever I focus on who he is and what he's done I get closer to him and I actually do the laws you know what I mean I actually do those things which we often focus a lot on um, so it's been nice to have that experience. Still challenging, still growing, but yeah. And you would say that you've experienced a grace awakening as you've grown up? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. What, what does grace mean to you? Um, grace to me, wow, that's a big question. I think grace for me, I like this one in Second I think it's Second Corinthians 9 verse 8 where it says, um, it, it illustrates God's grace as his ability to always in abundant supply our needs and I think this idea of just realizing how much needs we have in every area especially in the spiritual area um, and that God abundantly meets those needs over and over and over again um, you know it frees us from the burden of trying to prove that we no longer need God in a sense you know but that God can always supply always supply uh, whatever we need you're on a ministry journey yeah you're growing in ministry daily and this has been a very serious and significant appointment for you yeah where do you see yourself going in ministry from here <laughs> what's, what's your, what's, over the next five years what would you, you know that's a dream ah uh, that's such a you know i'm going to be honest i always thought i was going to be a pastor recently i've taken the decision to not become a pastor and many people react on that so I've had a few serious conversations with people. I've been working in the ministerial post for the past few years. Figured out that maybe at the moment, that's not where God wants me to be. 
Maybe I'm wrong. I'm open for that. <laughs> Where do you think God would like you to be? I really, I don't know. Okay. I honestly don't know. I'm open. I'm excited to see. Um, me and my wife, we have this vision that we um, want to be family focused. We're family, so we want to. We have some values where we're always going to be there for our friends and family. Um, we're always going to be open, especially to the youth around us, and we always want to help people on their next step. Um, what that looks like concretely. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, if you've got a message for the children yeah. on video, yeah. what would you say for the Pathfinders on video? What would you say for about, the about their Christian life, about keeping going? I would say I'm not going to preach about this this evening. Actually, I would say no matter what, be honest with God. Um, I know, growing up in church, we can often feel like if we just pretend, you know, just fake it till you make it idea which maybe has some truth in it, but it doesn't work with God. I've never experienced that it works with God. And I, throughout the Bible, you know, you see that God just wishes people to be honest with him. And if we're honest with him, no matter where we are, I think God can work with that. And that's helped me. It's helped many of my friends. So I would say to the youth, just be honest. Just tell him where you're at. And God will, God will work with that. Finally, what does Jesus mean to you? Wow. Um... Jesus means to me, you know, I like this verse in, in Corinthians 1, where God has made Christ unto us our righteousness, our justification, our sanctification and redemption. And um, what those words exactly mean is a, big, is a big question. But I think Paul's point is more, wherever you are, you're going to find that Jesus is everything you need. And I'm discovering that more and more. Thank you for talking to me. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Thank you. God bless you in your future life. Thank you.